Our top stories tonight, an unexpected weather phenomenon two nights ago without warnings shocked the island and caused quite a bit of damage. And the government continues to work on a national security. Also, a mother calls out Newe High School over bullying behaviour by both students and teachers. Kwaala here too. I'm Esther Pavihi. Welcome to this week's English Bulletin of BCN News. And a very special Kwaala here to our viewers from around the region, thanks to our partner Pacifica TV. Leading our news tonight, an unexpected trough of low-pressure system that passed through Niue on Tuesday night brought with it cyclone-like conditions with very strong winds and heavy rain, leaving many people shocked and caught off guard with no prior warning from the relevant authorities. The National Disaster Management Office, or NDMO, confirmed no reports of injuries or major damage to property of, or homes, but there were many uprooted trees and fallen branches blocking the main roads. BCN News with our reporter Mary Satakala caught up with a Lofi North resident, Victoria Tafatu, as she and her neighbours were clearing up the morning after. Victoria Tafatu got the shock of her life when she woke up yesterday morning to find her 80-year-old flamboyant tree uprooted from the unexpected trough on Tuesday evening. Tafatu is grateful no one was hurt during the process, with the tree only damaging a car parked nearby. Flamboyant tree? It's a penny tree in a way. Um, this tree has been like the, that's the uh, landmark and it's been there for like a very long time, more than 60 years. Uh, finally it met its demise last night. Um, we thought it was a tornado, but um, apparently this morning I came out and had a look. Oh, the mighty uh, tree has uh, come down. New Air Disaster Management Office posted an urgent notice to the public last night as the weather phenomenon was taking place, advising people to stay indoors and avoid traveling during those times due to multiple roadblocks, reports. NDMO Assistant Manager Haleen Tonyamana said they did not expect the weather to be as severe as that from last night. We received a few uh, messages from the public, um, especially as we were experiencing the same kind of weather conditions at the east, east side in Makapa. And so, um, yeah, we were checking if it had any um, weather bulletins or anything like that in terms of the rain. Um, in the weather conditions, um, but we did um, we did see the bulletin about the low pressure, but we did not expect it to get so severe. Tony Omana says safety was paramount as all events scheduled for the next day were cancelled or postponed. BCN News understands that the captain of the Matson's cargo ship made the decision to leave Niue and headed to Vavao because of the cyclone-like conditions. Matson's local agent, Frank Mokoia, told BCN News that thankfully all of its cargoes for Niue were offloaded and the crew were loading empty containers onto the boat when the storm hit. They managed to load 10 empty containers and the rest will have to wait until the boat will return in a few weeks' time. The last weather forecast update by the New Air Meteorological Services was issued on Tuesday afternoon at 1 p.m. There was no forecast of strong wind warnings to be expected for that evening. New Air Met Director Rosie Misiepo says the system was fast moving and a deep trough affected New Air from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Tuesday night when gale force winds were experienced. The highest recorded gale force wind speed was at Hannon International Airport at 78 kilometers per hour. But it was between... Uh, around 6.30 uh, until going up to 8 o'clock. That was the period of time that this trough um, brought in such devastating impacts um, on Niue. And um, it's, like I said, it's very fast moving, um, very matured, and very quick in terms of its um, activity. And within that time frame, it was um, seen to, to be matured enough and we watched it, like we monitored it. This is uh, hitting us right now. The winds associated with it is very high. There were gale force winds. The highest that we had was uh, 78 kilometers per hour. And that was um, here at Hannon Airport. But all our stations, the station in um, Liku and Vaipapahi were recording very 
gale force winds from 60 kilometers per hour to 70 kilometers per hour. It may have been unexpected what took place last night and the damages caused with major roadblocks due to fallen trees, but the locals were quick to adapt and respond to the situation. Ms. Yepo has encouraged the public to always be prepared and take heed of the information provided. My encouragement to the people is to, um, to take interest, I guess, and take interest in, um, in knowing this type of information, keeping, keeping in line with um, the daily weather patterns because it's out there. We put it out on email, uh, you announce it on radio, uh, we put it out on social media, but we don't come out and say, attention please, it's going to be, have thunderstorms tonight unless you go in and um, get yourself updated with um, uh, the, the warnings and it's it's um yeah it's our it's been our mission it's always been our mission to help people um, understand the basic uh, things about weather the troughs what is it associated with the trough is associated with winds and uh, rain heavy rain at times um, with high pressure it's associated with uh, fine and clear weather so those basic um, Definitions is what we need to educate our people and help them to understand so they can understand the weather patterns so, and also not to to um, to worry um, to worry um, about it but be prepared. Just last month, the new Met provided cabinet members with a briefing and a tour of their weather monitoring and wave forecasting that included site visits to their automated weather stations. In the aftermath of the unexpected storm, multiple posts on social media showed families, communities and villages were quick to clear the fallen trees so people could get to work and the buses can get through to take the children to school. New Air Police Chief and Head of NDMO, Tim Wilson, has confirmed there were no reports of injuries or damages to homes. Mersa Takala, BCN News. Niue hopes to join the Cook Islands and other Pacific nations in putting together a national security strategy, giving guidance on how to respond to threats and risks. The Bowie Declaration on Regional Security, agreed to by all Pacific leaders, recognises that a stable national security environment contributes to regional peace and security. Earlier this week, a national security strategy workshop was held for heads of government agencies and including officials from New Zealand's Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade of New Zealand, and also the Pacific Security College from the Australia National University. This workshop is a follow-up from a series of consultations in November last year with heads of government departments, which identified several key security concerns, including health and food security, climate change and environmental security, domestic threats, including cybercrime, fiscal pressures and maritime threats. The government solicitor general, Justin Kamupala, officially opened the workshop and welcome the officials from New Zealand and the heads of government agencies and participants. He speaks here about some of the threats that are perhaps unique to New Way, such as uh, population and capacity challenges. Threats may change over time. That's okay. But I mean, as long as we've got to have a start from somewhere, and identify the, the key and the major issues that, that are going to be a threat to us. Some of the threats that we have here may not be threats elsewhere because they've already taken measures to address these issues. So, so our, in some respect, some of our issues may be unique only to us. Um, a key example for me uh, is the issue of population and how that affects us, how it has affected us for many years. Um, how we address that, well, that's a long-term issue I think uh, government needs to grapple with with and hopefully come up with policies and measures to address that. BCN News also spoke with New Zealand's High Commissioner to New Way, His Excellency Mark Gibb, about New Zealand's role in helping New Way design a national security strategy that is fit for purpose and responsive to New Way's needs. In August 2023, New Zealand launched their own national security strategy and that's about looking at the resilience of New Zealand and our security strategy going forward. Um, and now today is an opportunity to come out into Niue and talk about how Niue might develop their own national security strategy. And it's not only security in its narrow confines, it's broadening it out and looking how Niue can be more resilient 
and what are some of the factors might, that might impact on Nui's security going forward. So it's a chance to engage with members of the Nui Public Service and Nui Government to think about how they might plan to deliver on a strategy that's fit for purpose for Nui. One of the keynote speakers is former Niue Chief of Police and former New Zealand High Commissioner to Niue, Ross Ardern, in his current role with the Pacific Security College at the Australia National University. For the National Security Strategy, we've had an overarching approach to it, and uh, the Pacific Security College, which is attached to the Australia National University, has had a part to play in uh, assisting the Cook Islands pull their plan together. And uh, the government of Nui, of course, is leading on the strategic plan for Nui, and it's supported by the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet uh, from New Zealand. And we have some very capable people that have come up to assist with the program here. I'm really excited about what they'll be able to present today and how we can engage with the government of Nui and the heads of the department on developing a strategy for Nui that's all-encompassing and all-embracing. On the challenge of capacity and population, High Commissioner Mark Gibbs says that the workshop will hopefully highlight those challenges and identify the key concerns from the new officials themselves. For me, that's what the workshop's about, is highlighting you know, where are the gaps, where are the issues, capabilities one on capacity, um, understanding what are the integral key concerns of NUE, and then how does NUE divide design a strategy that addresses capability, capacity issues? How does Nui design a strategy that's fit for Nui? So this is not about New Zealand coming in and saying, here's the, here's the map and you must follow it. It's more about Nui, you design what works for you. Capability and capacity, sure, that is a challenge. But again, by having this workshop, that fleshes out that and probably talks to how they can address some of those issues. In closing the workshop, Justin Kamupala called on participants to actively engage in the process and the discussions to design a security strategy suitable for new air now and into the future, bearing in mind, of course, some obvious key challenges such as population and capacity constraints. Esther Pavi for BCN News. After the passing of the first reading of the four Constitution Amendment Bills on the 27th of March, the New Year Assembly, the Fonagipule, last week revealed the public reaction in its preliminary findings from the call for public submissions prior to the introduction of the bills in the House. Some of the findings indicated support for changing the name of the head of government from Premier to the Prime Minister. But opinions split on the other three proposed bills with calls for more information. The four bills are expected back in the Fonagipule for the second reading in about two weeks' time. Here's more on that story. According to the statement from the Assembly, significant findings highlighted strong backing, calling for a change to the title of the head of government from Premier to Prime Minister with about 69% in favour. Similarly, about 51% supported the idea to expand the Cabinet from four to six members. However, opinions were split on whether the new Assembly's term should be extended from three to four years, with 51% disagreeing. Additionally, the public had reservations about the issue with the Audit Office of New Zealand uh, changing that name as they needed more information. If the bills pass their second reading at the end of this month, there will be a mandated standout period of 13 weeks to allow the people or the public the opportunity to consider the changes. If the third reading is passed, a referendum will be held for people to vote on the proposed amendments to our constitution. On the bill to change the leadership title, that would require a two-thirds majority of the voting population, while the other three bills will require a simple majority. The public referendum is expected to take place in August this year. Esther Pavi for BCN News. A concerned parent recently raised her concerns and frustrations about bullying at Niue High School. Mrs. Rangi Tikoepo's post on, on Facebook was seen more than 4,000 times with more than 100 comments. She spoke with BCN News last week raising concerns about the manner in which the school dealt with this incident and her reports of bullying against her child. The Director of Education, Natasha Tohovaka, in a statement to BCN News said that the school stands by its zero tolerance a policy on bullying and informed that the school is in the process of reviving the PTA, which has been inactive for more than 10 years. More on this story with our reporter Soraya Mangawa. 
Mrs Tikoi Pau brought her Australian-born children to Niue a few months ago so they can experience the culture and learn more about their Niuean heritage. But she was saddened to learn that her daughter had endured bullying at Niue High School. A few months ago, my daughter went through a first incident that happened with her um, a few Tongan girls, which um, I did address it but not at school because I didn't have any transportation to travel and deal this with um, with them. So I spoke to one of the teachers outside of school hours, which um, I mentioned everything. The teacher brought it up at school, but it was not take notice of anything that was uh, mentioned by that teacher. Then just last week on Monday that this started up again, but it started off with um, my nephew, my daughter and that girl, with the girl naming and shaming, body shaming my nephew's uh, parents and then she turned around and did it to my daughter. So um, it didn't stop there. So it. The girl went out of class, brought in her family, and everything started escalating big, which it wasn't supposed to be like that, which they thought that it all finished in class. But they continued on until Tuesday, then Wednesday. As a parent, I went up personally to see the acting principal, as the principal was in there, even the deputy. So I addressed it um, to the acting principal, which I thought that he will um, bring in the students and have a talk with them. She said the school did not deal with the situation regarding the issue and would not sit back and be scared. Appropriately, no. Personally, no. Um, why? Because I did address it um, in a professional way, like also I mentioned on Facebook that I am not a teacher, but I have worked and dealt with these kind of situations, and I did it in a proper way. But what I got from Newey High School was totally nothing. You know, if they are teachers, they are the ones to call the parent, address the matter, bring in the parents and the, the students, but nothing was done. As I have been told, that is not the first time, and all their uh, reports has gone down under, tucked under the, um, the rug. So for me now, I will not let this slide. It's about time to um, speak up and show what I have in mind. And I'm not going to sit back and be scared. You know, it's about time our parents should voice up their opinion, speak on behalf of their children, because at the end of the day, I am a concerned parent for what's happening. Mrs. Tikwe Po said that she was contacted by many parents after seeing her post, parents whose children were bullied at New High School, but not able to raise their concerns publicly. She said that it's very concerned because it's not just the students bullying other students, but teachers are also bullying and behaving like bullies. Mrs. Tikwe Po said that these are issues that should be raised by organizations like the PTA, but New High School has not had a PTA committee for more than 10 years. New should have a PTA in school. A social worker or anyone that can work in villages that can help students not only students to me personally they should also get people to address these matters with teachers bullying students now i reckon and i think to me that children is thinking that bullying is okay because their teachers are doing so if the kids are bullying and the teachers are bullying so who can help them you know, if we get a PTA in for students, we should get some for teachers as well to do their job as teachers. They are their children are there for them to protect them, to teach them, but not there to call them names and all sorts of things. And it's gone too far with what they're doing. My daughter's gone through the teachers hitting her. My daughter's gone through with teachers calling her names. My daughter's gone through with teachers chasing her out of classes for no reason. She explains to me, and now I am addressing all these matters because it shouldn't be done like that. And it's very sad that it's happening to us. We need to get help for our schools. We need to get help for our students and teachers, PTA, any social workers, any, anyone that can help us professionally. In response to the issue, Director of Education Natasha Dayono Tohobaka says the acting director Bertha Tongahai and teacher in charge Sitani Vea have dealt with the matter in accordance with Niue High School policy. Tohobaka says, as stipulated in the Niue High School policy, Niue High School has zero tolerance towards bullying. It is discouraged at all times and aspects of it are taught in the school curriculum. She added that they have addressed the social media post directly with the parent to resolve this issue raised. 
Prioritizing and safeguarding the well-being of both students and teachers is essential to prevent conflicts and foster a positive learning environment. In the statement, it states, In future, we ask that these concerns be raised through the proper channels of communication with the school rather than on social media. Niue High School is currently seeking expressions of interest for those parents in an effort to revive the Niue High School Committee. Let's work together to ensure everyone feels valued and supported. Saraya Mangawa for BCN News. The government is looking to renew the members of three of the statutory boards, namely the Price Control Board, the Tender Board and also the Board for Telecom Newham. In a press release last week, the government announced an invitation to any member of the public to submit their expressions of interest along with a CV and a brief statement outlining their motivation, experience and or qualifications for serving on a, as a board member. Sarai Mangawa explains. The government is looking for individuals who are passionate about making a positive impact and contributing to the governance of our country through serving as a member of these government boards. This is an exciting opportunity to play a role in shaping the policies and decisions that affect the well-being and development of Niue. In the event of a resignation, replacements will be appointed by the Cabinet. The Office of the Premier and Cabinet will provide more information to those interested in submitting an expression of interest. Saraya Mangawa for BCN News. The Director of the Department of Environment, Hayden Talangi, says that there is still a lot of work to do when it comes to managing and reducing plastic litter on the island. Talangi says they are looking for ways to provide alternative options in supporting retailers and the private sector. It has been uh, effective to an extent, but um, we still have a lot of uh, uh, work to do in terms of strengthening and also providing us our retailers with an alternative option. So that's what the project is uh, doing and also the Department of Environment is looking at alternatives and also um, looking at how we can support the private sector in terms of providing these um, alternative um, shopping bags. He said a team from the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program or SPREP were on the island last month facilitating a session with the Environment Department to assist them with the implementation of the project. Talangi said uh, that in the next few weeks they will be recruiting a project coordinator who will be managing the project for the department. The team from SPREP has been able to um, facilitate here in Niue was around um, getting ourselves organized in terms of ready for implementation. So over the next few weeks we'll be recruiting uh, a project coordinator in terms of um, managing the project for the Department of Environment. The Pacific Ocean Litter Project funded by the Australian Government aims to reduce marine plastic litter in the coastal environments of Pacific Island countries. In other local news, earlier this week, the Office of the Clerk to Cabinet informed that Minister Honourable Essa Mona Ainu is on duty travel overseas and in her absence, the member for the village of Olofi North, Mr Tutuli Hacker, will be temporary minister. Acting Minister Hacker will be responsible for the Ministry of Natural Resources until Friday this week. He will be responsible for the Departments of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, Met Services and Environment. Minister Ainu will return to the island tomorrow. And last month, the UNEP CIS PAC 5 project, co led by Newet Met Services and the Project Management Coordination Unit, provided a briefing for cabinet ministers on the island's weather monitoring and wave forecasting capabilities. This initiative established an integrated climate and ocean information system and a multi hazard early warning system. Government officials, ministers, and UMET made on site visits to the automated weather stations located in Liku, Waipapahi, and Hikutavaki. During these visits, MET office staff provided explanations about the functions and significance of weather monitoring devices, highlighting their crucial roles in safety, preparedness, agriculture, aviation, transportation, energy resource management, environmental monitoring, and public health. Following the AWS site visits, attention shifted to wave buoy locations at Namukulu, Alofi, and Halangingie at Tamakotonga. The data accumulated by these stations over time will play a crucial role in enhancing the accuracy of weather forecasting. Mersa Takala, BCN News. And tourism numbers continue to climb as the industry continue recovery post-COVID pandemic. And visitors arrived both by air and sea. A cruise liner carrying over 200 passengers arrived on the island last Saturday morning. 
The scenic Eclipse 2 docked outside of Sir Robert's Wharf was a hype of activities as the passengers disembarked to tour the island and were also greeted with warm welcome and live entertainment at the commercial centre. Here's more with our reporter, Mary Satakala. The commercial centre was filled with life entertainment and dancing as over 200 tourists toured the island last Saturday. Travelling all the way from Yorkshire, England, tourist Elaine and Ken Davy said they looked forward to touring the island and enjoyed the warm welcome and entertainment on the rock. New Air Tourism Advisor Hayden Potter says it was a fantastic and executed plan when the cruise liner arrived on the island with local operators making a profit within four hours. But it was a it was a fantastic, um, well executed plan. I'm gonna I'm gonna say we had about 230 guests arriving um, onto the island. A big big focus was making sure that when these people arrive, that they are spending money here. Um, simple as that. So um, historically, a lot of people have come come on shore. They've wandered around. They haven't spent any money. Every single guest that came ashore had pre-booked tours, um, committed to a minimum amount of spend. Um, and they paid uh, that in advance and we had all our local operators uh, where we could involved um, so so it was a win-win so a lot of our operators you know would have made a week's worth of income in four hours um, from that from that ship the cruise liner departed on Saturday afternoon headed to Tonga Porter has also confirmed that another cruise liner is scheduled to arrive in the next few weeks. Meanwhile, the twice-weekly flights to Newair resumed last week on April 1st. Newair tourism advisor Hayden Porter says they doubled their capacity numbers with increased flights and is the highest they have seen in the last four years. The, the first of the second flights uh, come back in for the, um, you know, what we would determine as the shoulder and peak season. Uh, obviously, there were two flights running from November to um, the end of January, which, which helped getting all our VFR, um, visiting friends and family uh, to the island. So it's really just uh, gearing up to maximise the demand after a, a little eight week gap, which gave us an opportunity to uh, finish a number of the jobs at the airport. Um, the interiors at the airport are all um, looking absolutely wonderful at the moment. New floor, air conditioning, so all that happened in that gap. Period. So, yeah, what it means for, for numbers is effectively we double our capacity in terms of, of um, available flights to, to come into Niue. Um, we expect the first couple of months, you know, um, each of those flights certainly is unlikely to be full full. Um, but as a combined total, it'll be a lot more people coming than, than, than one flight. Potter says in regards to the continuation of two weekly flights, they are currently working through these things with the airline. Still working through those things with with um, the airline and ultimately it is it is one of their decisions that they'll um, need to make but um, you know the relationship's really good um, there and you know our job is to, to maximise the capacity um, that's available and, and making it an attractive uh, proposition for them uh, to continue. Weekly flights to Niue are now on Mondays and Fridays. Mer Satakala, BCN News. And the Rugby League Tuamotu Nines tournament kicked off last Saturday at the Tuasea Grounds in Hakupu. Four teams went head-to-head, -head, including Tamavayava, Tuapa, Alufi and Hakupu. We take a look at how well the teams performed with our reporter, Soraya Mangawa. According to the New Year Rugby League Tomotu Facebook page, the results showed Tuapa leading, beating all three teams. Following behind is Tamavayava with two wins, one loss. Alofi came in third with one win and two losses, and Hakupu were defeated in all three games. The results for the teams were Hakupu 0 to 22 Tamavayava, Tuapa 16 points to 6 for Alofi, Alofi 18 to 16 for Hakupu, Tamavayava 10 to 16 to Tuapa. Alofi 6 points to 26 to Tamavayava and Hakupu 6 to 34 to Apa. This is the first of three rounds for the ninth tournament. The second round is scheduled to take place next Saturday, 20th of April 2024. And on our regular updates from China Railway First Group, their project manager, Juan Juan, provided BCN News with an update on the laying of the slurry seals around Tamakotonga intersection. One of the challenges so far is the bad weather conditions and the lack of aggregate. For this project, the slurry is the last layer and the slurry is made, made from uh, as uh, made, made from made from asphalt and the fine aggregate and the, the emulsified uh, asphalt uh, is, is mixture 
uh, with uh, water and the asphalt and the emulsifier. And, uh, and the first do to the emulsifier, uh, emulsifier asphalt, uh, first we need to mix water and the emulsifier uh, and, the, and the water. And then mix, uh, have a, a kind of machine uh, cut the asphalt into pieces. Uh, Chan Chan has also confirmed that the road will only be closed if the slurry work has to be done. He is also thankful that to the local community and road users for your patience while they continue to work on the upgrade of the roads. Uh, we only close the road when we do the slurry, uh, slurry work, so please, uh, uh, please uh, uh, the people follow the traffic sign uh, and uh, don't drive or work on the slurry. Uh, and uh, follow or uh, follow us the traffic uh, sign uh, ins instructions yeah and, uh, and uh, also I hope the people uh, if ha have any question can contact with us and uh, and uh, and uh, mm, uh, thank you uh, the local people or people understand our work yeah. And before we leave you tonight, from time to time, we get an opportunity to catch up with some of our friends visiting the island. Ross Ardern and his family are longtime friends of Niue, so we were happy to get an update from Ross about Laurel and the family. First, though, I asked him if he managed to do his regular takai or going around the island on this trip. I've, I've done half of my own takai, and it's exciting to see the new road, isn't it? My Takai would normally take me several hours, but I drove uh, from uh, Avasali to Hakupu in a flash, in a New York minute. So congratulations, Nui, on getting your road done. Um, I know Premier Talangi used to say to me, whatever happens, it can't be worse than what we've got. So at least you're moving forward. A couple of years ago, Ross went through some health issues and is glad to overcome that health scare with the support of his loving family. Laurel is doing great. Uh, Jacinta's offshore with Neve and Clark and um, enjoying her time offshore with Harvard University and uh, contributing well there. Well, from my perspective, she is in any case. So, um, and my oldest daughter, Louise, who was also here for several months, uh, is uh, working with her husband in uh, information and technology. He said that daughter of New Wear and former New Zealand Prime Minister Dame Jacinda Ardern and her family are well. You know that she loves the place. So, you know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if she turned up one day. Yeah, she, she hasn't forgotten her roots. And that's our bulletin of BCN News for tonight. Thanks for your company. I wish you well. Good night. Non au revoir.